Hi there, Sanjay Gangal from EDA Cafe. I'm here with William Wang, CEO of Chip Agents. Hello, William. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, uh, hello, William. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, so tell us about Chip Agents. Yeah, so Chip Agent is a new AI agent EDA tool uh, that we created to accelerate the design and verification, especially at the RTL level. Um, I think right now, as you know, the challenge with chip design verification is that there has been a lot of workflow uh, coming from AI inference, um, you know, task, and that really requires us to design, you know, AI chips, right, to actually support the workflow. And what that requires is that, you know, when you have billions of transistors on a chip, it became very difficult for anyone to understand the code base, to write the test cases, but chip agents can actually help, um, you know, writing uh, the uh, functional verification solutions for you, help you to solve problems on the fly, understanding your workspace. Um, I believe um, AI agents is the future of EDA because um, you've seen so many changes in the um, you know, software domain, but now I think it's a good time to really think about the next generation of EDA tools driven by AI agents. And Chip Agents is our um, you know, current solution to really make some pioneering impacts in this field. Okay, and uh, Chip Agents recently achieved 97.4% pass rate on NVIDIA's Verilog Evel V2 benchmark. Uh, what exactly is that benchmark and what does it mean for you to get 97.4% pass rate? Yes, so it's a great question. So in 2023, NVIDIA released this Verilog Evolve human data set and the task is to go from the specifications to RTL generation. So 2023 is an interesting time that ChatGPT came out, large language model really changed the landscape of how we are working in many disciplines. So that's why NVIDIA released that benchmark around that time. And uh, last year, they also had the Severe Log Evolve V2, which is um, you know second data set in the same domain going from specific to RTL. Now, um, if you only look at ChatGPT, it gives you about 50% accuracy on that benchmark. NVIDIA, they have their agentic solution, it's called Verilog Coder, and that can get to about 90 something on Verilog Evolve Human. But for our solution, we can get to about 97, 99% on both benchmarks achieving the CFR results. So this is so far the best results on specification to RTL generation tasks. Okay, and uh, uh, what specific advancements in your AI-powered development tool enabled this level of accuracy and performance? Yeah, so this is an excellent question. So uh, we had very deep expertise in AI because I am an AI professor at the UC Santa Barbara. So we spent 15 years developing our own AI technologies that the first time that we trained the uh, neural network language model. It was the recurrent neural network language model. It was back into 2011. So it was actually even before the ImageNet. At that time, uh, it didn't take off. Uh, but I think with more data, with more resources, people gradually figure out, okay, actually language models, especially the neural network language models, can really bring down the perplexity, right, for many language modeling tasks. So it was first applied, you know, to things like speech recognition, machine translation, but we've seen, um, you know, this all the regressive language models really took off, right, in the last five years. So specifically in our lab, um, you know, we know exactly, right, what the AI advances are. And with this new company, Chip Agents, we brought many of our um, expertise and talents uh, to really invest, right, in how this large language model and AI agent enabled solutions can actually change the field. So uh, we actually have pretty good results, not just on the, you know, very long evolved benchmark uh, that actually in December, if you look at AI agents for soft engineering, our three bench solution was also ranked at number one in three bench, which is the AI agent benchmark for soft engineering for projects like Python. So we have very deep expertise uh, in this area in terms of uh, leveraging AI solutions. We know when it works, when it doesn't work, what are the best solutions, right, for individual problems in the design verification domain. So that is uh, very proudly our expertise is AI. 
Okay. And uh, uh, how do you integrate with the existing simulation and debugging tools? Yes. So uh, we support all three major vendors. So whether using Synopsys VCS or using Cadence Excelium or Siemens uh, Questa, um, our solution is agnostic, right, to the existing simulator because the agent can actually use any simulators, right, to solve problems. The cool thing about AI agents is that it can choose, right, to use different tools and, you know, look at different metrics and then the AI can keep improving. So there is this virtual circle that you can choose any, you know, third party vendor tools as long as you know what you're shooting for. Are you, you know, trying to optimize the PBA? Are you trying to optimize a functional coverage? So uh, the nice thing about the chip agents is that is, you know, the solution is independent, right, of the third party vendor tools. And uh, chip agents uh, emphasizes a combination of language models with advanced search algorithms for iterative refinement. Uh, how does this approach compare to traditional AI-driven coding tools? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would tell you that um, as a natural language processing professor, if you ask me five years ago um, about generating grammatical sentences, you know, we couldn't, right? So even five years ago, the sentences we generated are not grammatical. So there has been, you know, some advanced search algorithms, some, success, some successful stories you've seen. For example, AlphaGo, right, is actually a neural network combined with Monte Carlo tree search so that you can actually looking at the huge search space in the gold game. Um, I think there's opportunity here as well um, in the EDA space that with the help right, of large language models, AI agents, and advanced search algorithms, you can solve many complicated problems. For example, functional verification, right? At the chip level, that's extremely hard because you have numerous files and many files are so long and you have all these different task benches uh, with uh, all these different requirements, many modules, many IPs you're integrating. But, um, you know, for human, it's going to be really challenging. But if you're working with chip agents, AI agents can help you, right, understand the design, understand how you are writing your existing color groups and color points, understanding how the existing director tasks are written. So there's a numerous, I think, opportunities in this space to see how we can actually combine advanced AI algorithms together, right, with neural network. And uh, scalability and usability are key factors for AI adoption in semiconductor design. How does chip agents adapt to different design and verification scenarios? Yes, so we have seen many uh, different cases um, in our customers, and uh, specifically, there are certain challenging aspects. For example, right, so language model, you have the context lens um, that is limited, but certainly you can get huge design, right? So then, you know, there's the question, how would you be able, right, to design a scalable solution that can actually include, right, all of the context information? So we have specific proprietary technologies that we develop in-house, right, to be able to understand, okay, when you're looking at design tasks, what are the contexts we need to think about? When you're looking at, let's say, the verification problem, what are the contexts you need? Let's say you're doing formal verification, what is the information that is needed in this particular space. So currently we have some pretty good solution that can actually help our customer at a very big scale to be able to pull information as needed. So this is what we call a query, uh, a starting from query, right? It's a query grounded approach. So instead of trying to build like a world model in your knowledge base, we're trying to start from your query, right? And pulling the contacts and information that is relevant uh, to help you to advance, uh, to your accelerate your workflow. And uh, are there plans to extend the platform scalabilities beyond Verilog? Yeah, absolutely. So we support not just Verilog, we also support um, other um, HDL, we support um, high-level synthesis languages, well, for example, Python or Scala, we support things like C or System C. Um, the strengths about, um, you know, the chip agent is that, you know, fundamentally language model can um, be very flexible, right, with different languages. And it's not just the machine language, human language as well, right? So when you're working with emerging markets in Asian countries, they speak different languages than English, we can also incorporate that. 
um, in chip agents to actually, you know, for example, being able to, um, you know, answer questions in Korean, answer questions um, in Mandarin and in other languages. So there's a lot of advance, right, for language models and AI to understand, um, you know, different uh, programming language and also human language. And uh, what differentiates chip agents from other solutions on the market? Yeah, so um, I think a big um, expertise we have is to be able to understand the uh, workspace and being able to understand the context. So if you just try some queries on, you know, ChatGPT, well, it doesn't understand, right, how you're writing your tasks. Uh, it doesn't understand how you're doing your RTL design. It doesn't understand your specs and all that. But with chip agents, we understand the workspace extremely well. Um, so we have uh, good knowledge about how you're actually doing your work. Um, and we also have uh, several agentic features that is very unique on the market that you can have these AI agents running in the background autonomously to help you solve problems. For example, before you know, I actually go, uh, go, go to sleep, I can actually run chip agents in the background trying to optimize uh, for my uh, functional coverage, and then you come back to work uh, second day, then you actually have benchmark, right? You actually have all these different test cases already established uh, to optimize, right, for your functional uh, coverage solution. So uh, the AI agents are fully autonomous, but we also have human in the loop solutions where AI can work with human, right, to accelerate the um, performance. So we offer um, a suite of solutions to tailor that to customers' needs. And are you planning to expand this to the physical uh, world of the chips as well in terms of route placement and routing? Yeah, so uh, this is an excellent question. So we know there are some other startups uh, in this physical space, and we've seen some demonstration and some see some examples. My current understanding is that um, certainly, you know, we can show a demo in the, for example, simple functions, uh, multiplication addition. But the challenge, as you imagine, is that also the scale, right? So how do you actually do that at a huge scale? So I would say that our current focus is at the RTL level. Uh, it's more on the front end. But I agree with you, there's also huge opportunities for AI and AI agents in the entire vertical, right, for chip design verification. So not just in the front end, in the back end, in the physical side, there's also a lot of opportunity, even simulators, right? So there's uh, other things we can do as well. So this is really exciting time to do a startup in AI for EDA, because I think the tools is going to be very different um, five years from now. Okay, and and uh, do you also have uh, uh, do test vector generation? Yes, so we do uh, generate test vectors. So uh, given your constraints, given your requirements, we do have AI agents that can actually help to optimize to write um, you know constrained random tasks. We can generate cover groups and cover points. We can also generate directed tasks. Um, test vector for you. So this used to be very painful, right, for many engineers. But our engineers utilizing, um, you know, chip agents, we see huge re reduction in development time. For a very small module in Open Titan, used to take, for example, you know, 15 hours or 12 hours to write a single module from scratch with some reference code, and then you need to verify it. But with chip agents, right, we can automate, you know, the code, can automate the test vectors you mentioned. So the entire time, you can we can only see about um, 1.5 hours, right, in terms of time that engineers use, right, to interact with chip agents to come up with a fully verified solution for that module. So, um, yeah, so it's part of the solution and this um, uh, certainly can reduce, right, the um, development time. And how many people do you have in your team? Uh, so we have 10 engineers uh, mm -hmm. in, my, in, in the background working in the office in Santa Barbara. Okay. And, and uh, uh, do you have funding? Funding, we are an early company. We started in 2024 uh, in, uh, as a pre-seed company. Uh, so, yeah, so, so far, I think the company is doing really well. We are also you know, hoping to continue to, um, you know, uh, deliver best solution to the customer. And of course, um, I think there's also a lot of opportunity for us to, uh, you know, continue to advance, right, in the uh, new funding rounds uh, this year. Okay. And uh, what is the best way for our audience to find out more about chip agents on the internet? 
Yes, so they can just go to chipagents.ai, so they will be able to see our latest events, the news. Um, if they're interested in seeing a demo, they can also request a demo and we can uh, talk to the team and see how we can provide a custom solution uh, for your team. Okay, and uh, William, is it okay if I ask you a few personal questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, what do you do for fun outside work or what is your personal passion? Yeah, excellent question. So uh, before I came to Santa Barbara, I was in Pittsburgh, um, you know, when I was doing my PhD at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, so we like hiking. So we like, you know, going to all these different state park, national parks. Um, after moving to Santa Barbara, um, you know, in 2016, uh, we got very interested in fishing. So we, um, you know, sometimes go out, go to pier. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of activities in Santa Barbara, um, you know, that is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, final question, cats or dogs? Oh, I'm a dog person for sure. <laughs> do you have a dog? <laughs> uh, uh, do you own a dog also? Uh, yeah, we, we, we have a golden retriever. He's uh, eight year eight years old. So yeah, so certainly I'm a dog person. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Uh, uh, thank you so much, William, for taking time to record this interview. Have a great day and stay safe. Okay, thank you, Sanjay. It was really nice talking to you and let's continue the discussion. Sure. Uh, this is Sanjay Gangal from EDA Cafe.